I'm James Daly and my monitor stopped working this week. <laughs> I spend most of my time designing and creating visual things on the computer. So either having a big monitor, a big workspace to work on or multiple screens helps me avoid that feeling of um, like digital claustrophobia where everything is stacked on top of each other and you feel very cluttered as you work. Uh, so with my monitor just carking it this week, I thought this is probably a really good opportunity for me to make this video and explain and show some of my favorite portable monitor setups, portable dual monitor setups, what I'm using right now while I wait for my monitor to be fixed. I found these two setups to be really useful either when traveling, you need to travel light, but you still want two screens, or if you live somewhere where you need to pack up your workspace at the end of each working day so it doesn't take up room in an apartment or a smaller house. Both of these setups use an iPad as a second screen and Apple's sidecar as the software powering it all and a couple of little third party accessories which I'll show you uh, as we get through each one. In terms of screen size, it doesn't really matter what size you have, both in terms of the Mac and the iPad itself. The important thing is that it's compatible with Apple's sidecar and I'll put a link in the description to the requirements page if you wanna double check what you have is going to be compatible. So let's check them out. Option number one is the Roost Stand option. Now this is the Roost Stand. It's an incredible laptop stand. It uh, saves your back and, and neck by bringing your screen up to eye height and it's got adjustable heights so you can get just where you want it to go. It folds up so small and so light and it's perfect for traveling or even just setting up on your dining room table while you're working. I might make a full video review of this if you're interested. Let me know in the, in the comments if you want a whole separate video just for this stand because I think it's worth it. So to set this up, all you need to do is put the laptop on the stand as usual and set it to maximum height and make sure it's of course locked into these rubber stoppers at the bottom. And then you use these rubber stoppers to hold the iPad in place over the place of the keyboard. And now you kind of have this vertical kind of stacked layout for your two screens. You can then connect the Mac to the iPad via sidecar, adjust the layout so that you, uh, the software knows that you've got this vertical layout here and you're basically good to go. Okay, so advantages of this setup. Uh, it saves your back and neck. So it brings the screen completely in front of eye level. You're not looking down and hunched over looking down at a screen and nothing's off to the side. You don't need to be turning your head to look at a second screen. Everything is just in this vertical line uh, perfectly in front of you, ready to access both screens. And disadvantages, this may be an advantage or a disadvantage depending on who you are, how you work and, and how you think of this, but you will need a separate keyboard and mouse to use with this setup for two reasons. Uh, one, you know, you've elevated the laptop, so it's kind of, you know, at eye level. So you don't want to be lifting your arms to type like a, a T-Rex on the keyboard. The second, of course, is the iPad is covering the, uh, the MacBook's keyboard. So you're going to need those separate peripherals anyway. Um, but if you are using your stand in the first place to, to bring your screen up to eye level, as you should be for your back and neck, uh, you probably already have this second keyboard and this second mouse. And disadvantage number two, depending on the size of the iPad you're using and the MacBook you have, it may be covering parts of the MacBook hardware wise that you want to be accessing, such as the Touch ID sensor or the, oh, I was gonna say the touch bar. Does anyone use a touch bar? Maybe, maybe not the touch bar, but yeah, the touch ID sensor may be covered. So you might need to shift things around a bit, see if you can access everything along there. So that's option number one. Option number two uses the Mountie. Now this is the Mountie, this little, clippy thing. <laughs> Rather than using a laptop stand, this actually uh, serves to attach your second screen, your iPad, your tablet, whatever you're using, directly to the screen of your MacBook. It uses these soft rubber grips combined with these clips to hold everything securely in place without actually damaging anything. All you do is you attach the mounty to the side of your screen, whichever side you really want to be working on, slide the iPad in place, lock everything in, and that's, that's it. <laughs> you then go into settings, of course, and set the, the configuration, the layout to be side by side, turn on sidecar and you're good to go. You could actually go pretty crazy with this option and attach another tablet on the other side and then a smaller tablet on the top and then a second phone to one of the tablets and <laughs> build out like a whole command center of screens if you're wanting to. Um, maybe you do this at home though. You'd probably get some weird looks at a, at, at a cafe or a co-working space if you rocked up with this kind of just command center of screens everywhere. <laughs> Part of me really wants to try that though. That'd, that'd be really fun. <laughs> okay, so advantages. Uh, you need less gear. You really just need this. No computer, uh, no keyboard, no mouse, just the mounty. Clip it together. That's all you need to carry. It's a lot lighter as well. And as I said, it's extendable. You can add more and more screens if you want to. You're not really limited by the stand. You're just limited by how many of these little clips you have. Now, of course, for disadvantages, I'm sure you've thought of this. It's not as good for your back and neck. You are still kind of hunched over the laptop. Um, because, and this is the second disadvantage, it adds a bit of weight to the side of the computer, of course. You're, you know, you're attaching an iPad to the side of the MacBook. So if you put it on a stand, it is prone to just kind of tipping off. <laughs> I suppose you could balance it out by having another one on the other side, but 
you know, then you need a second iPad and it, it gets a bit complicated. So it's a lot better to, and a lot more stable to keep it on the desk itself. So you just need to be careful of your back and your neck and yeah, it's not quite as good for you. One of the big challenges of having a dual monitor set up is its lack of portability. But both of these setups let you have all of the advantages of two screens while still staying completely portable, really, really light to carry everything around, allows you to travel, allows you to pack it all up when you finish at the end of the day. I really like both of them. And depending on how you work, it may actually completely remove the need for a whole big standalone monitor. You could just be using this setup as your permanent dual monitor setup. These setups are great for referencing something while you're writing an article or keeping a chat app open on your second screen while your main work is on your main screen or just referencing an image while you're designing or creating something on your main screen. I love having two screens while I work. I feel a lot more productive when I can see everything at once and I can move and multitask between multiple apps it's a lot easier. So hopefully this has given you some ideas for ways you can create a dual monitor setup relatively inexpensively, depending on the iPad you buy, and have it be completely portable. I put links to everything I've talked about in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. If you like this type of video and you want to see more videos about creativity and tech, I'd love it if you subscribed, and I'll see you in next week's video. Thanks for watching. See ya.